Moving ahead with the event, we would like to invite Dr. Raj Paroda to motivate the students to develop the future of agricultural science. Dr. Paroda is a Padma Bhushan awardee and former Director General of the Indian Council of Agricultural Research. He has been recognized by numerous awards and titles over the span of his career. He is, he is a member of the CGIAR SIMEC and board director of the International Fertilizer Me uh, Development Center, IFTC. Currently, he is the founder chairman of the Trust for Advancement of Agricultural Science, TAS, New Delhi. We welcome you, sir, to present your thoughts on the theme, Role of Youth in Accelerating Agricultural Growth. Professor Ajit Verma, distinguished uh, uh, faculty members, students, ladies and gentlemen. It's indeed a matter of great pleasure for me to be here this uh, afternoon to congratulate you all on your 70th, 17th uh, Foundation Day. Professor Verma was telling that uh, it was 17 years ago, this uh, uh, institute uh, on microbial technology was established. It's a great thing to see the family growing with what you indicated in the beginning. And uh, this is indeed a great uh, satisfaction. And this happens to be also your birthday. So I would like to wish you a long and healthy and happy life. The subject of my today's uh, deliberation is the uh, role of youth for accelerating agriculture growth. Uh, I am really happy that uh, excelling uh, most of the boy students. Role of youth is very relevant in today's context. When we look at uh, where we are, starting from Bengal famine and our status uh, of agriculture considered as begging bowl, we have come to an era of uh, food self-sufficiency, feeding almost now 1 point, uh, it's touching 1.4 uh, billion people and 80% uh, of our farmers are uh, very small holder not having more than two hectares of land. And uh, we have been at one time importing food and didn't have money to buy. From that uh, level, despite fourfold increase in population, now we have sixfold increase in food production, thanks to those green, blue uh, and white revolutions. Our horticulture production has excelled now, that of food grain production. And uh, we have been able to reduce poverty from 70 to almost 20%. So in uh, one's own life, particularly I would call my own life, because when I joined uh, Indian Agriculture Research Institute for doing my PhD, the seeds of Green Revolution were being sold. And uh, at that time, our food security was shipped to mouth. From that level to now be a major exporter, uh, one among the first 10 in the world is uh, a, a great achievement in itself. 
and through food we could also help in increasing our life expectancy and doubled it which used to be 32 years when we became independent now it is 68 years we have got uh, great achievements in the milk sector the largest producer of milk about uh, 200 million ton uh, more than 10 times increase than 1950 similarly for horticulture uh, very little production before now you have almost 320 million tons and fish production which was not even 1 million ton in 50 is 13 times more in that respect when we look at India has come a long way we have uh, different uh, positions either first or second except in case of meat uh, Indian National Agriculture Research System is one of the strongest one I happen to work with this system for more than six years and uh, I can tell you many developing nations uh, cannot uh, uh, compare with the kind of uh, infrastructure and institution that we have built. And uh, other countries like Philippines, Pakistan, Nepal, Bangladesh, uh, Sri Lanka, try to copy the model of ICR, but have not been able to provide the kind of uh, uh, unification of functions, research, extension and education, as well as the status of the that of the secretary to the government of India to that of the director general well then if we have enough of food good milk more of fish then what's the problem why we are still concerned why we are talking of increasing farmers income and doubling it the government is talking of not only uh, Ministry of Agriculture, but uh, now Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare, which means you need to really think in terms of taking care of our farmers. The international challenges are poverty, hunger, which we still have, uh, malnutrition, climate change, and uh, at the farmer related, uh, farm related low income, youth is not interested in agriculture and uh, policy support also is not that high or that much as it used to be when we were having a challenge of increasing our food production to meet our household nutrition security. In that context now, there had been a lot of challenges. I won't go into all those details because already enough time has gone uh, with various other presentations and you must be uh, wanting to go for lunch. But uh, uh, there are problems of soil health, uh, imbalance, uh, use of nutrients, also diseases and pests. And that's how uh, the, the role of institution like this for biopesticides, biofertilizers becomes important and much has been already mentioned. We also see that uh, increased production somehow is giving an impression to our policy maker that maybe there is no more need to provide needed support. And uh, there seem to be a complacency in that respect. So at global level, there is concern of poverty. India is still has a maximum concentration of poverty compared to the rest of the world. We have brought it down to around 16%, but yet it is about 200 million people in terms of total number. And uh, when you talk of hunger, uh, I will mention about it in the next slide. Uh, we are still uh, have a great concern for household nutrition security and uh, same way climate change is becoming an important issue.
when we look at uh, global hunger index our position is not very encouraging it's 96th out of 107 countries that means uh, we need to think of now nutrition security not only the food security so if second revolution has to come it has to be around household nutrition security 40 percent of our children below five years of age are undernourished which again is the highest concentration compared to the rest of the world so we cannot really be happy uh, on the laurels of what we achieved but we have to now uh, take this as challenge and maybe in my generation we took the challenge of meeting food security the next generation will have to take the challenge of providing better nutrition Recording in progress. Sometimes the technology is, yeah. despite all advancements, create problems. Uh, so that's why you say that uh, machinery would not work. You would need human resource to still set them right. And in that respect, then what are the? It's not uh, going further. Please, could somebody check it? Recording in progress. Which is not uh, sustainable and you need inputs, inputs of those kinds by which farmers cost can be reduced. So when you want to double the income, there are only three ways. One is to increase productivity while reducing cost on inputs. And that's where you need biofertilizers, biopesticides, and technologies by which micro-irrigation and so on. And uh, farmer needs knowledge. He is hungry for knowledge, not for subsidy, as I understand. And he needs credit, soft credit, and also uh, he wants to be linked to global market. That's, again, bigger challenge. So then I come to the uh, main topic of uh, challenges being faced by youth. Firstly, youth is again starving for good knowledge. He has to be linked to a, a good institution for technical backstopping. And he needs to look for a, a mentor like Professor Ajit Verma. Without that, you cannot really make progress. And this has been amply demonstrated by presentation by Mr. Saira. There are, is, agriculture is not taught as a subject in the schools. So how a student would really get attracted to this as a subject? We have been talking about it thanks to this new education policy that uh, now uh, it has been decided that agriculture will be taught in the schools uh, in future. Limited access to land, which is already there. Then there is a lack of financial resources, uh, difficulty in linking to markets, I talked, and little voice to the youth in decision making in the family. Uh, I will cite some examples uh, later on this. And uh, Agriculture in general is having social poor image. When I uh, took agriculture as a subject, uh, I was not all that bad in studies, but uh, my all other friends who went for 
either medical or engineering. That was the craze. Uh, they laughed at me that you are going in agriculture. What will you do? I don't have any regret today. I think I did a good decision to take agriculture. I never knew I will be going in research or heading the national system one day, but I was having intention of doing good agriculture on my own farm, which my parents were tilling. Also, there exists aspirational and attainment gap. That is a major concern. Because uh, I talked to, I had been chairman of Haryana Farmers Commission. And when you talk to the youth or the farmers, they say, well, we are interested in agriculture, but kindly tell me, sir, will I be able to uh, get my son educated in the same school where you are sending your son? And whether I will get the same respect which you get when you are having white collar job. So these are definitely the issues which need to be looked at if we want youth in agriculture to be retained. And they cannot be retained unless they are motivated. This aspect is important which has to be learned. So when we look at the youth as a general at a global level, uh, we will be 9 billion by 2050 globally. And uh, luckily, India has 356 million youth between 10 to 24 years. And uh, 200 of those are living in rural areas. Still, agriculture uh, is retaining about 50% or 55% of our population. Agriculture and around agriculture. So we have that strength, but we need to capitalize this strength. And India's population is likely to remain young compared to even China or Indonesia, the other uh, thickly populated countries and we are going to remain young because our average age of the nation is 30 years compared to that of USA uh, is 40 and 46 in Europe and 47 in Japan. So that's a strength. I would like to consider the, like you know uh, if, if Brazil is producing which is number one in horticulture if they are producing more of horticulture produce, if they don't export, they would not survive. India luckily has internal market. We are second producer of fruits. We can consume 80 to 90 percent of it. So these are our strengths as well in, in that context. So if you are going for any entrepreneurship, again, it is the market. It is the need assessment and it is uh, that aspect which has to be kept into consideration. So we in that context would like to look at what to be done. And for youth, I would like to tell you, think globally, but act locally. Don't only think globally. I go in green pastures. I myself went for my postdoc to UK and I had three jobs. But I decided to come back uh, because my country was needing uh, agriculture research support. So think globally, but act locally. I went to see the best gene banks in the whole world. And I became director of National Bureau of Plant Genetic Resources in New Delhi. I didn't have a single room to store seeds. So I had to come back and say, I will build myself. And today we have the second largest gene bank in India compared to the rest of the world, even better than USA. So when I talk about this, then what about youth for global and regional and national initiative? In that context, let me tell you that uh, when I became uh, first uh, founder chairman of Global Forum on Agriculture Research, which is based in FAO, uh, Rome, uh, we organized a conference in Delhi, which was that time opened by the president, and uh, that was in 2006. And uh, it came out very clearly that you need to involve youth if you want to 
improve agriculture in future. Without their participation, you will be doing business as usual. Agriculture will not diversify. No one will take challenge to make it specialty agriculture, specialized agriculture, or verticulture, terrace gardening, or peri-urban agriculture. It will continue like rice wheat cultivation. So we decided to establish a young professional platform called Vipod and establish its office also in, in FAO Rome along with GFAR. And then we organized, and I happen to be chairman of the organizing committee of Global Conference on Agriculture Research, number one in Montpellier and number two in Uruguay. And uh, we took initiative of inviting at our own cost through organization 200 young uh, agriculture uh, people, not only the graduates, but even farmers. And try to listen to them as to what is their need and what are their challenges. So you need to look at all these and then we organize also regional conference once in Pakistan through Asia Pacific Association of which I was executive secretary based in Bangkok. So you have WIPAR linked to GFAR, Global Forum. European Commission is supporting them very actively. We also then thought we have done a lot at global level and I came back uh, from my uh, tenure in Central Asia that thought why not start for youth something in India. So we organized uh, the, the national conference on foresight and future pathways of agriculture research through involvement of youth in India. And that's, that's from the program agriculture uh, research, uh, attracting uh, rural youth in agriculture, ARIA started in 2013. Then we organized again a regional conference in Delhi uh, with the agriculture minister in 2018 and uh, came up with uh, a kind of Maya roadmap. Why I call it Maya, not ARIA? Well, attract, you can't attract just the youth by telling you remain in agriculture. You have to motivate him and then attract youth in agriculture. So it becomes Maya. And Maya is there, then everything is there with the farmer. The word Maya is with Sri Ram. He will tell you how you can make it. Journal workshop on youth as torchbearers we organized in Hyderabad at uh, Telangana University and then also in Ludhiana and the next one is being organized in Ranchi and we came out with some important you know observations and recommendations. One is youth need not be looking for white collar jobs by going for formal degrees alone. There must be vocational program and training and practical training of them so that they become job creators and not job seekers. And that's what was the important message uh, which is to be taken home by most of you. I don't know when uh, you were asked to raise your hand, who will like to be entrepreneur? So how many hands were raised? But uh, uh, certainly we would like that uh, this must draw your attention. Youth, not only as entrepreneur, could also be as advisory agent for extension services to provide good knowledge to the farmer because farmer needs that and farmer doesn't know what to do when he wants to change his agriculture. Youth also has to be input provider, good quality input, which is a major problem. And obviously youth must also become entrepreneur to, to provide all these inputs and produce them in quality and in ample quantity. Today we are talking of biofertilizers. We organized a regional conference on biofertilizers, came out with the conclusion that not even 4% of our uh, biofertilizer production is there. 
how will you meet those if you want to talk of organic farming or if you want to talk of uh, going in for uh, reducing cost of the farmers uh, uh, investment then from where will you get them and get them of good quality that is main point people will be selling many things but what do you require is the good quality product so that farmer is not cheated even if it is a planting material for horticulture i will talk to you about it later because i am now a horticulture farmer myself for last 20 years so we came out with many of these recommendations and publication you will be probably happy to go through uh, our uh, trust which was established uh, when the uh, indian science congress was held Uh, which i happened to preside in 2001 at pusa institute and patel bihari bajpayee ji inaugurated it we established a trust trust for advancement of agriculture sciences you can look at its website www.task.in and you will get lot of information relating to what i am talking about and about indian agriculture as a whole uh so maya road map i'll come at the end so government initiatives are there on youth fortunately uh like arya i talk a student ready program which is based on the ravi program which was started uh during mid 90s when i was heading icr uh we talk with the industry people for placement of our graduates and industry people said your graduates are not good for us they are not having practical knowledge and we have to train them for one to one and a half years and they even don't know what are the problems of farmers and they have not seen many of them have not seen villages so we started at our own cost from icr which is still continuing we call it the uh, rural uh, agriculture work experience program for 6 months the final graduate students go and live with farmers in the villages and try to understand the difficulties that are being faced because in agricultural university also now majority of intake is of people from urban areas not from rural areas unfortunately so these are the difficulties any of start up india is another program stand up india i don't want to take more of your time on this national skill development mission uh, make in india skill india so many of them probably many may not be knowing about them and many may not be knowing what uh, benefits we can get from them so these would require again proper knowledge understanding and therefore uh, also think uh, nationally but again act locally so what do we want youth for now now we want agriculture to be more secure and sustainable secure in the context of uh, against all calamities farmer still get something in return his monthly income is at least to the level where he can survive and for that the options are he must diversify he must uh, go for secondary agriculture if he is growing mustard and a lot of uh, uh, pollen available why not he also grows and go for ap- apiculture and have honey production and increase his income so these are secondary link to agriculture and specialty why not asparagus why not baby corn why not uh, 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 other specialty uh, vegetables fruits and uh, also leafy materials then we cannot continue uh, improving the income of farmer unless we talk of post production management so far we have been talking production 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 the weakest link is post production and for that post harvest management value addition and marketing becomes 
very critical. And that's why agricultural marketing and agricultural business management uh, becomes very important. In that respect, I will also cite like Sairam, one example of uh, this young gentleman, Basav Raj, who is now in Bangalore. Uh, I met him in 2008 in uh, Dharwad Agricultural University. He had come from uh, Texas after doing his PhD and uh, was trying to uh, have some practical uh, uh, orientation for producing bio pesticides. So I told him, don't go for job, be an entrepreneur. And he said, yes, sir, this is the challenge I take. He took this challenge. He started with bio pesticides, but then he found niche in bio fertilizer. And today, if you look at, I mean, his successes, which are there, uh, he has his own cryogen agri app. He has got five lakh farmers whom he's providing knowledge. He is also having uh, bio fertilizer production, which he started in 2009, dynamic nutrient provider. You see many of products here as well. And uh, he patented and the patent is in 151 countries. So not only one here, and that's what I, one has to think. And then he is making now more than 50 products. And uh, uh, he has now an industry of about 35 crores and uh, employing more than uh, 150 uh, 10 people and graduates. So things can be done, but you definitely need people to determine, have dream, and work for them to achieve those dreams, which uh, our honorable former president Abdul Kalam used to talk about. And when he addressed the Youth Congress in Delhi during my science congress, uh, this was his slogan to the youth, have dreams, but work hard for achieving those dreams. Another example, this person is not even graduate. He didn't know what to do. He was in family, uh, uh, a kind of uh, considered uh, not useful uh, boy. So he uh, went here and there and then went to his father and said, can you give me two, three acres of land? You have 20 acres. Father said, what will you do? He said, you are not able to cultivate because of salinity. So give me one hectare area. I will make a pond and start growing fish. Nobody used to grow fish in Haryana at that time. So, I mean, you have to think, you have to find out niche for yourself. And now today, if you see, he is the largest uh, fish spawn producer, fish seed producer in the northern India. And he has his, you know, fish bite like, uh, you know, McDonald outlets. He has his own fish bite outlets and selling the cutlets and also exporting fish cutlets to foreign market. He, I, I promoted him and he received Padam Shri in 2019. So sky is the limit. Another farmer around again in Sonipat who is growing baby corn. Uh, we said you try to organize market and link yourself with market by value addition. And today he is the largest producer in whole village for baby corn. And similarly in Sonipat, there are farmers who are the largest producer of mushroom in the whole country. And they never knew before what is mushroom. So the sky is the limit. That's what I'm wanting to tell you, provided you take interest in that respect. So what are the elements of success for a entrepreneur? Institutional backstopping. You have to have incubator. You have to have Professor Ajit Varma and his colleagues. Without that, 
you will never get knowledge you will not get confidence you need somebody to be your mentor who can hold hand with you and that's what is important in the beginning and those parts people successful where they had and need not be only professor ajit verma it could be now saira also as a mentor who are successful whom you go and see because when you talk to farmer he said i need knowledge but i don't see knowledge by reading i want to know knowledge by seeing he must see if once he sees that there is a success he would himself take it up then he can take challenge he can take risk because taking risk is a major concern and market need assessment one must do like uh, the the person started with bio pesticide though we started registering bio pesticides also at uh, all india level i was chairman of pesticide registration committee uh, that time but uh, he thought bio fertilizer is possibly a better avenue for him but that doesn't mean bio pesticides don't have opportunity so that has to be understood what is that to be done and he would require credit but above all he must have his own strong will and perseverance because without hard work nothing is going to succeed so finally i would like to just give you some examples and hurriedly pass through these slides uh, we need to scale innovation and there are innovation you you all every day here uh, must be talking of innovation what you need is not only research paper and refereed journal but you need product for the end user if you have to serve the society otherwise you are serving yourself your own career you are building you are becoming professor and what not but then what others are gaining from it so those are the requirement you can think of for nutrition security bio fortified crops it is it was talked this morning the work can be done lot of it is happening in case of banana i am chairman of this uh, nabi institute of biotechnology in mohali where the first uh, uh, chain additive uh, plant which is having six fold increase of beta carotene vitamin a has been now already evolved but it needs release it needs policy decision by the government for which it cannot reach and today india is the largest banana producer in the whole world and jan irrigation uh, is producing more than 10 crore of tissue cultured banana making available to farmers and farmer don't otherwise grow any other material but go for tissue cultured banana from jan irrigation so that reputation has also to be built in that respect and and then like this uh, itc each of all for knowledge even youth can go in for uh, app for knowledge sharing proper knowledge at right time if today i have to do some operation and there is problem of disease where do i go and what do i get you can scale many things uh, these i will again repeat in the in the next one improved seed production of hybrids the sky is the limit seed sector is growing very fast in india even we can export abroad but most of the seed in vegetables is being imported today and 1 kilo of any say cauliflower seed will cost you more than 1 lakh of rupees why can't we produce and why can't we export what is bad? what is wrong in our system uh, agriculturally we have all the kind of climate and the best uh, environment knowledge sharing through ict paid extension service if i have to use pesticide for controlling a disease farmer doesn't know which pesticide how much water to be also added which equipment is to be used for spraying if if you have a youth who can provide this service on custom hire basis 
Anybody will be happy to do that. And that man will never get you a wrong pesticide spray. Today, the problem is of, you know, uh, wrong pesticides, spurious pesticides, and uh, also those pesticides who, whose uh, uh, expiry date is over. But they get from the person because they take on loan and whatever the person gives, uh, they, they are happy with it. Farm mechanization, I don't have my bullocks or my tractor, but I have a farm in the village. And if I have to plow my field, I just give a phone call and there are young people who will just come and on acre basis will tell you all that. Next evening or next morning. The sky is a limit for this again on mechanization because time is needed uh, for now what we call is precision agriculture. And precision agriculture would require timely operation. Quality input supply, I talk. Uh, agri clinics. We have polyclinics. Why can't we agri clinics? And established in different taluka or blocks or the districts. Young graduates can come together and form them. And, and there are all kinds of support being provided by the government. Post harvest processing, value addition, I will talk about it. Micro irrigation, a lot of scope of fertigation, protected cultivation was talked about. You can increase your income uh, almost by 10 to 20 fold from one acre of area if you go for these uh, specialty agriculture. Conservation agriculture, accredited laboratories. It was mentioned that there are 30 accredited laboratories in the whole country for organic farming. How farmer will get it? 30 in the whole country? Then, and if it is not certified organic, people will challenge you tomorrow and you will not have market. So we are talking of soil health cards, but where are the soil testing lab? Good quality soil testing lab. When you can have lab for your blood test, urine test, why can't there be soil test lab by entrepreneurs? They will give you the best results. And in the government test labs, we find that between two labs, the, the difference will be tremendous. Inland fishery, I mentioned, flower production, amazing. Now, you, you can imagine that even Israel is exporting flower to a greater extent. Country where you can't think of because of lack of water. We have all the potential, orchids, we have the largest variability in India, but Thailand is exporting more orchid than any other country. Why not? But where is the emphasis? Who has gone into that direction? Conservation agriculture, you need machinery, you need knowledge, and you cannot have expect every farmer to buy and keep it if his land is very small. So there has to be custom hire system if the technology and this technology has to be perfect so that it is not counterproductive when you want to scale it further. Protected cultivation. Anybody will be happy to construct it and there are a lot of failure. People have constructed because they had money. They thought they will earn it, but they didn't have technical backstopping. They didn't have knowledge what to do, even solarization. Is, is not a, a, a job of everyone unless you have proper knowledge. So these are the issues. I was in Boston and uh, went to supermarket and uh, all supermarkets organic produce is sold almost at double the cost uh, compared to inorganic uh, shells. And uh, then I said from where it is being produced. So came to learn that Suppliers are those who have repurposed these shipping containers who are lying there around the city. And one repurposed shipping container can grow 
two acres worth of green leafy salad produce which is being sold in those supermarkets. So sky is the limit. And terrace farming now, I, I don't have time to show those slides, but terrace farming is again, which can be, you don't need bigger land. So there are opportunities. Even we are still broadcasting fertilizer. Why broadcasting? Why can't we have leaf color chart or even uh, decision support system like leaf seeker or going for other important uh, available uh, technologies? This is my own experience. I had been in horticulture. I thought in arid region, come from uh, Rajasthan near Ajmer. Uh, arid uh, region, mostly people don't grow horticulture. I thought water is less, why not grow horticulture through drip irrigation system. So you have to save water through drip. You have to think of better soil health through conservation agriculture. You have to think in the context of uh, ensure nutrition for people in the market. So maybe look for date or even think of other fruits or look at local fruits like Karonda about which there is no research, nobody knows. But, but everyone otherwise buys in the market, but nobody produces as such as a cultivated crop. And how many are the options, whether it is uh, fig, whether it is uh, guava, pomegranate, or uh, what you can call is a chiku sapota. And even arid horticulture could provide you an opportunity for agro-tourism. And there is a lot of interest among the young children around the city to, to go and see. Even in the Boston, uh, I had to go with my grandchildren for apple picking in a farm. And it was a learning experience. These are the, you know, opportunities which can be thought of. And we need to link with the market, otherwise middlemen will always keep on exploiting both producer as well as consumer. So how can we link to the market? Only youth can help in this process. And therefore I see opportunities for you to go in for value addition. You talked about uh, low cost uh, storage, systems, which in fact was also promoted at IRI, and you are also advocating. So food industry, feed industry, for animal, we have the half of the human population as animal population. And there is plenty of demand for better animal feed, but good quality feed is also a challenge. And then now the opportunities are emerging for ethanol production. And the institution like this can think of that because mage is already being used in USA and maybe also tomorrow used in India. And uh, sugar cane in Brazil is already a crop for uh, biofuel production. And in India also now it is being allowed because we have excess of sugar now in our buffer stock. Like food, we have 70 million tons of buffer stock. Similarly for sugar, we have 4 million tons now. People may not be knowing and we can't sell it outside because our cost of production is higher than the cost of sugar outside India. You can't compete unless you bring in efficiency. And, and there are opportunities like thanks to COVID, people are talking of now local food and the forgotten foods which we were eating before. And now we are again going back to Bajra and uh, Ragi and uh, also Methi and uh, Jira and whatnot for better health and humanity. So you can think of several recipes and can train youth to produce them and even licenses can be taken for them. And you can take patents also. Seed spices, we are the largest producer of seed spices in the whole world and exporting them also. But exporting them as not value added products. Even guar, 
which is the largest producer we are, but we are exporting only the split and powder, not value added. And we buy back 140 products which are value added from Guar powder alone. So that's where we are. And in that respect, enhancing even, you know, goat milk, nobody used to think of it. Thanks to, you know, dengue, that people started recognizing the importance of uh, goat milk. Now you, you are having at uh, uh, higher premium price, the goat cheese available in market, goat uh, uh, kulfi, and uh, also some of these other products. Who, who knew about aloe vera? We were growing in Rajasthan for ages. And in last 10 years, aloe vera has become now a craze. So sky is the limit, what I mean to say. That's what I'm trying to emphasize. Prosophis juliflora, all Israeli babu, growing everywhere in all barren lands and along the roads, but uh, of no use other than fuel. But uh, lately, its leaves and pods are now being processed for feed and they are making a lot of money from this uh, besides the, the fuel itself. A committee on agriculture was formed by the present government, which I happen to chair, particularly to uh, decide about new policies and action plan for secure and sustainable agriculture, in which we have Emphasize for youth what to be done as a roadmap. We said, let in the Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare, there should be a separate department of youth in agriculture. Unless there is something, the emphasis will not be there. The other one is, why not have a national vision on youth and integrate all these schemes into that relating to agriculture. Then, we also have to encourage youth for agri-service centers on, for custom hire services. For that, the training has to be provided by the institutions and vocational programs and uh, informal education is critical. We have to link with the market. So if you can't do yourself alone, either as self-help group or cooperatives or farmer producer organization. And opportunities are ample on that. Need for paradigm shift from narrow focus as youth as a farmer. We have to now think youth as a value chain developer. That's the only way by which the youth will have its own place and government to provide enabling policy environment. So, dear friends, institution like this is the right place to have catalyzed to take up a challenge to either become a, a, a technology agent, a, a techno input provider, or even entrepreneur, or a, an agent to link farmers to market where benefit is of both the producer and consumer. And that's the only way by which we will uh, go towards better future, good health, and prosperity. With this, I would like to thank you very much. That's what was the purpose, I suppose. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for shedding light on the essential workings of the agricultural industry and helping us understand the need for development and innovation in the same. I would now like to invite Dr. Amit Chandra Kharakwal, sir, to felicitate Dr. Paroda on behalf of the AIMT family.
Now, please join us in inviting Professor Dr. Balvinder Shukla, Vice Chancellor, Amity University, Uttar Pradesh, to grace the event with a few kind words. We move ahead with a quote. Gratitude is the fairest blossom which springs from the soul, and the heart knows none more fragrant. I welcome on stage our beloved Dr. Monica Gupta to close this event with a word of thanks. Thank you, Ishita. Thank you, Aditya. A warm and graceful good afternoon to our most valued honorable founder president, sir, chancellor, sir, vice chancellor, madam, Dr. W. Selva Murthy, professor, Dr. Ajit Verma, and respected speakers, student participants, management committee, and everyone gathered here. It's my privilege to propose a vote of thanks and acknowledge the contribution of those who worked really hard to make this event are so successful. I, Dr. Monica Gupta, on behalf of entire AIMT fraternity, would like to extend my most sincere thanks to Almighty God for making today's event a resounding success. With his blessings and grace, we are able to make this event a grand success. I extend a really hearty thanks to our speakers, guests, who spare time from their busy schedule to grace the occasion. Today, we had an opportunity to hear your thoughts, and this will surely be going to encourage us all in our near future. Dr. Ganesh Sharma, thank you so much, sir, for sharing your knowledge with us. Dr. K.V. S.S. Sairam, thank you so much, sir, for choosing this day as a platform for launching a new 5G technology on global scale, sharing your views with us. And thank you so much and congratulations to you. Dr. Raj Paroda, thank you, sir, for enlightening us with your knowledge and experience, sharing your views on how you can accelerate the agriculture. Your thoughts have enlightened our minds and have shown us a new path. My gratitude to all we, my gratitude to all speakers for gracing the occasion and sharing their opinions. I'm immensely thankful to our teaching and non-teaching staff, scholars, students, volunteers, and members members of organizing committee for their enormous cooperation and support. I am short of words for their involvement and their willingness to take on the completion of tasks beyond their comfort zone. I would like to express my thanks to administration department for their endless support for taking care of every necessity. Last but not the least, I would like to express my thanks to IT team for their help and support in organizing this event on hybrid mode so successful. Thank you so much everyone for your presence and support Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Monica, ma'am, for giving such a lovely vote of thanks. Now, as we move towards the end of the event, I hope everyone present here had a wonderful time and we convey a heartfelt thank you to all the eminent chief guests and the students and the faculty members for making this event a huge success. I request everyone to move to E2 seminar hall for cake cutting. We have organized a special lunch for the guests 
for which they are requested to stay in the seminar hall itself, while the students are requested to proceed to E2 corridor after the cake cutting. Thank you all for coming. I hope you're happy.